I'm Jamie Mayo. I'm the Assistive Technology Coordinator at Washtenaw Intermediate School District and one of the creators of Tinkered Toy Box. I'm going to show you how to modify a Fubbles mini bubble machine to be switch activated. So the bubble machine came in this packaging and I opened it up real carefully going through the bottom here to fold this flap out and there are these two plastic pieces that you have to rotate to get the toy out of the packaging. So keep all of that so we can repackage it at the end. I installed the batteries on the bottom. It takes three AA batteries. So I put those in and I wanna test it first to make sure that it works because right now if we have a toy that doesn't work, we can return it to the vendor and get a refund. But once we start cutting wires and stuff, we avoided the warranty and we can't get our money back. So I put the batteries in rotates so I know that it's working. Now I'm going to take the batteries out so we can do the modification. Put everything in this cup so I don't lose it. And now there are four screws here that I have to remove to open up the toy. My screwdriver just barely fits in there. Is that going to come out? That's okay. This button is going to want to fall out when you take it apart, so be real careful there. You can set aside the lid and take the button out. Now I have the bubbles and the fan that sucks in the air to blow the bubbles. This red piece just pulls off. Set that aside so it doesn't get lost. Then there are two screws that are holding the motor on. I'm gonna remove those. And then the whole thing just lifts off. And I wanna be real careful of all the wires so that I don't pull any of them out. The trickiest part about this one is that everything's really tiny. So you have to be really careful and getting into everything. So the first thing I'm gonna do is use my soldering iron to remove this red wire from the battery compartment there. So now I have this wire loose and I'm going to take my jack for my uh, switch. Let's see, I'm going to leave that on for right now. And I'm going to solder this wire onto one of these arms here. And then I'm going to cut a new wire to solder onto the other side. So they'll be on opposite sides. some extra solder on it I'm trying to take off I'm gonna strip the wire a little bit more
And then sticking the wire into the hole and one of those little arms and folding it over so that it stays put. Bring over my helping hands to hold things in place. One. I'm going to cut a new wire. This is a 22 gauge wire that I'm using. Now I've stripped both ends. This is a stranded wire, so I'm just going to wind them up so that they stay together. And I'm going to put it in the other arm. These wires are so tiny. This wire is too tiny for my wire strippers, so I'm just gonna see if I can use the wire cutters to gently cut the insulation off of it. to keep the wire at the angle that I want it to be at coming off of the jack this way. Now I'm going to solder it. This doesn't use a whole lot of solder. This is a little funny. This end has to solder back onto the same battery connector that the first wire was originally on. I'm going to try and get everything out of my way. This is where it gets tricky. I need so many hands. Set it back into place. Put the 
batteries back in just so I can test it and make sure it's working before I move on. It's there, and here's my switch. I'll plug the switch into the switch jack. Carefully. <laughs> Things are like not meant to go in before they're installed. Yeah. Okay, now if I turn on the button, this little white button, and hit the button. It works! So now I know that everything's connected, right? Because it worked. Unplug the switch. Take the batteries back out. Now I need to drill the hole to install the jack. Carefully set it aside and drill a hole in the side. sure there's not plastic built up on either side of the hole I just drilled. If there was, I can use a utility knife to clean it out. This one looks pretty good. Now I'm going to take this little nut that's on the jack off. Right orientation. Stick this in there. And then use the nut to hold it on. those pliers to tighten it up. Okay. I just have to put it all back together.
So I got the two screws back in to hold the motor in. Then you wanna make sure that when you're putting all the wires back in, they're not gonna catch in the fan at all. Cause this fan needs to be able to spin without hitting any wires. I'm just gonna make sure that everything stays away from the fan. And this red piece goes, there's a little lip that goes behind the orange wall here. So I'm gonna stick that back in there and then there's two little pegs that go into holes there too. Use the screwdriver to push it back to get that uh, lip to go back in there. So the red piece is in, and then we have to put the button back in. The white button goes inside this hole, and then it sits in that little divot, and then the lid. Get a little solder in here, take that solder out. I'm just being really careful to make sure I don't pinch any cords. And I look all the way along here to make sure it looks like it's seated in there really well. Looks good. And I've got to put the screws back in. The two screws that went on the inside to hold the motor in place, they were a little bigger than these screws out here. So make sure that you get the right ones on the inside because those big ones would not fit in these holes. That should be good. We're gonna put the batteries back. Then we're going to plug it in and see if it works. So first, turn it on. It has to be on for the button to work. Then when the child pushes the button, it works. We'll put bubble solution in there. Turn this on. I don't have lots of bubbles. The next thing I'll do is... Take the switch off and I'd repackage it back into the box so that it looks just like a packaged toy so that that child, when they get the toy, they can have the fun of unboxing it as well. And that's it. That's how you make the bubble mini bubble machine.